Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! And welcome, welcome to, to worship, worship with Lord, with Lord of, Life of Life from Edmonton, Edmonton Alberta. Alberta. Why do you get to wear the collar? Because I am the shepherd. What am I? You are the sheep. Why can't I be the shepherd? Because somebody has to be the sheep. I lead the liturgy and say the first part. You get to do the response. Can, can we talk about this? Because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and all. And also with you. Hey, can, can we come back to the sheep shepherd thing? We sing together our first hymn. You're about to cut me off again. This isn't over. We join in the prayer of the day, O oh God our Shepherd. Ha! Did you hear what you said? You said, God our Shepherd. This is not the time for debate. Let's just do the liturgy. People aren't joining today for some kind of drama. They want to worship. The people at home want to pray this prayer out loud at home. So, fine, you can't we'll do it your way. We'll but we still, need to talk. we still need to talk. We join in the prayer of the day. O oh God, our shepherd, you, you know, know your sheep by name, by name and, and lead, lead us to safety, to safety through, the through the valleys of death. Guide us, us by your voice that, that we may walk, walk in certainty and security, and security to the joyous, the joyous feast prepared in your, your house, house through, through Jesus Christ, our, our Savior and Lord. Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm for today is the 23rd psalm. Hey, why don't we start with the first reading from the book of Acts. I will read the odd-numbered verses, and people like you can uh, read the uh, verses in bold print. People like me, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Okay, now let's turn to the book of Acts, the second chapter, for our first reading for this Sunday. The Holy Gospel according to the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. I said, the Holy Gospel according to the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. I heard you the first time. I want to do the reading from What Acts. does it say right there? Where? Where? Under you, lift Where? up your shirt and look. What does it say? It says gospel. So, which passage are we going to hear? Is it the reading from Acts chapter 2? No, the gospel. I can't hear you. The gospel from John chapter 2. 10. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep hear his he voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow, his, follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. You seem a, a little too excited when quoting the words of Christ. You aren't Christ. But like Jesus, I am a shepherd. No, you are a pastor. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. That is the Sunday to thank God for all the shepherds in charge of all the flocks in all the churches in all the world. That is so not true. The good shepherd is the Lord. Like in Psalm 23, you spoke these words just minutes ago. The Lord is my shepherd. And we just heard from the Gospel of John where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Who are they quoting in the Bible? Does the Bible quote you? Or is the Bible quoting the words of Jesus, the true shepherd of the sheep? The Bible quotes Jesus. Jesus is the good shepherd. This day is about our relationship as sheep of the flock of Jesus. This is about how Jesus guides us by still waters and leads us on the right pathways for his namesake. And today has nothing to do with your vocation as a pastor. Are you sure about that? I will state it for the record. The fourth Sunday of Easter is not a day for celebrating your vocation as pastor. Obviously, you haven't read the Wikipedia page. Good Shepherd Sunday occurs on the fourth Sunday in the Easter season. The name derives from the gospel reading for the day, which is taken from the 10th chapter of John's gospel. In this reading, Christ is described as the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The psalm for the day is Psalm 23, which also makes use of shepherd imagery. Okay, no surprises there. Wait. The fourth Sunday of Easter is also kept as vocation Sunday in many church denominations. Vocation Sunday. 
is a Sunday set aside each year by various Christian denominations as a day for prayer and reflection in relation to the call to ministry and Christian service. So this day is about my vocation as a shepherd. You are not a shepherd. You are a pastor. How can I show you that you are wrong? Hmm. Bible? No. Legal rulings? No. Wise philosophers? No. Television? Yes! Hey, did you ever watch the show Firefly? Firefly, the 1997 television series starring Edmonton's own TV star Nathan Fillion as Captain Malcolm Reynolds as he and his crew of misfits crisscross the galaxy, frustrating the ruling alliance, avoiding the dangerous reavers, and helping good, honest folks smuggle protein bars to the poor. Hey, there he is. There's Captain Reynolds, and, and there's Zoe, and Wash, and there's Jane and Kaylee. There's Simon and River Tam. Watch out for her. Oh, and that is Shepherd Book. I love Shepherd Book. What vocation is Shepherd Book? Well, in, in Firefly, Shepherd Book leads worship and says prayers and gives advice and all the stuff a usual pastor does. And in the year 2517, what is the title they gave to a pastor? They call their religious leaders shepherds. And did you know that our word pastor comes from the Latin word for shepherd? In sh is Shepherd Book not the best pastor on television? <sighs> shepherd Book. It's better than Reverend Lovejoy. Better than the pastor from Impastor. Better than Jimmy Swaggart. I have to admit right. that you are a shepherd. If I am a shepherd, I should dress the part. Since I, am, since I am an important vocation in the church, I should wear this decorative stole all the time. As a shepherd, I need a symbol of my authority. I should have one of these. This isn't over. We still haven't heard the first reading for today. Our first reading for this day is taken from the second chapter of, of the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the, and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. The they in this passage was the people, the regular folks who had joined the new movement, this new church. They are the heroes here. Sure, the apostles were doing wonders and signs, but they, they, the people, were the ones who were praising God, gaining the goodwill of the neighbors, devoting themselves to worship, and training and learning. They sacrificed their time, they shared their wealth with those in need. This day isn't about your vocation, it's about their vocation. These early Christians had discovered their vocation. Yes, for some, it meant a full-time commitment. For some, it meant sh uh, being shepherd of a congregation in the early church. But vocation is never just about pastors. It is about finding your way of being part of your local congregation or doing uh, or being that person who gives back to your neighborhood. If you want to be a really good shepherd, 
then help the people of your congregation discover their vocations. A vocation is your role in the life of the wider church. You don't need a fancy stole or a crook to do that. I want to be one of those pastors on TV. Thanks to the COVID crisis, now you are a pastor on TV. Don't you miss in interacting with real people face to face? You don't want to be any kind of character playing a role on TV. You want to be your own real self, living the life God gave you, honest about who you are, and cherishing God's love and sharing that. And give up all the trappings of authority? I like my crook. You don't need this. All you need is the desire to love God, serve others, and care for all that God has made. When you fall in love with the trappings of power, you become the thieves and bandits that Jesus warned us about in the Gospel reading. If you need a crook, then maybe you are a crook.